My name is Caleb Walker, and Ashley Poe and I uh, conducted this experiment uh, distillation with methanol and water. Um, talking about, uh, give a little introduction and background to it about the reflux ratio and um, why we chose the reflux ratio we did, um, and then the calculation of theoretical stages via McCabe Thiel and the Sueto equilibrium line, um, and the tray efficiency we found from that. Um, the tray temperature phenomenon in comparison to a pure water system, um, and then the heat loss um, of the entire column. All right, so um, the first two experiments we ran were just uh, water experiments, um, and then we ran this one with methanol and water, and um, as we expect, the results, the graphs changed a great deal. So we started off with 31% um, mole percent methanol, 69 mole percent water, um, 14 liters in total in the reboiler. And we put the reflux at 100%, just termed total reflux. Um, and then we started the reboiler power at 2400 watts and um, decreased in random increments all the way down to 400 watts. Um, so the reflux ratio is the reflux stream over the distillate stream, L over D. We use total reflux with uh, no feed. Um, why do we use total reflux? It's because this determines our minimum theoretical stages, and we can also find our tray efficiency off of this. Um, since we had no feed, um, or distillate collected, or um, bottom collected, we took XB and XD to be tray 12 and tray 1 temperatures. And uh, where are we going? Tray 1 is like the top most tray into the condenser, and then tray 12 is the bottommost tray uh, of the column. So tray 1's temperature was 63.4, indicating that it contained um, 100 mole percent methanol. Um, at the end of our experiment, we went down to 600 watts. And then tray 12 was 87.3 degrees Celsius, which indicated that it had 11 mole percent methanol. Um, this is how we constructed the McCabe Thiel diagram. Um, so, <clears throat> with the McCabe Thiel diagram of uh, total reflux, you're separate, you don't have a separation line or a rectifying or stripping line. So, you just uh, calculate your stages from the operating to the equilibrium line. And we used um, the Van Lahr working model that we made in distillation class. Um, so, this found our theoretical stages to be 5.8. Um, the actual stages of the column were 12. So to calculate tray efficiency, we just divide the theoretical stages by the actual stages times 100%, which gave us 48% efficiency. Um, Sueto equilibrium line is basically a stripping line, but you use trial and er error to get the um, uh, efficiency at the exact trays that are in the column. So since we knew it had 12 trays, um, we used a partial reboiler and total condenser to get um, a separation line that gave us exactly 12 stages. And when we did that, the separation line, that red line, um, was using the efficiency of 51%. So comparing the McCabe Field theoretical stages to this Persuado equilibrium line actual stages, our uh, efficiency didn't vary very much, so that's good, 48%, 51%. Um, the first two experiments we ran with total reflux were just a pure water system. You can see that 1,200 watts every stage reaches the boiling point of water, 100, and then at 650, um, each tray drops off. And um, if this continued to keep running, you would see each tray drop off systematically and all look the same. However, in this experiment, we had random temperature drops throughout, um, decreasing wattage. Um, so this is part three, the tray temperature phenomena. So you can see random drops here, here, and this is, um, this is tray 12, tray 11, 10, 9, 8, and so forth. All right, so the temperature changes based on the composition um, on each tray. And this is, this should say like temperature in it. Ideally in a column, you know, you have the, uh, the lighter component 
going up. This is, it's indicating the opposite of that. But this is just the temperature. So at the composition, if you have a higher composition of methanol in your tray, your temperature is going to be closer to its boiling point or lower. Um, and then if you have more composition of water, which is 100 degrees Celsius is its boiling point, then your tray temperature is going to be much higher. So, uh, so the cause of temperature drops is based on the liquid vapor equilibrium on each tray. Um, and like I said, the higher concentration of methanol lowers the temperature. So this is a composition of methanol versus time. And, um, this is actually at 2,000 watts. So you can see that tray seven, which is in the middle of the column, uh, achieves 100% methanol composition. Uh, but it does take time. It took about 35 minutes for tray seven to reach 100% methanol. Um, and you can see tray eight doesn't even reach 100% in this 80 minute gap. Um, and here notice, uh, this is at 1,600 watts to 800 watts. Um, tray 7 solves 100% composition. But look at the relationship between tray 9 and tray 12 here. You can see that tray 9 changes more while tray 12 changes less. Um, this is the last one. Um, this is from 700 watts to 600 watts. And then right here at the very end, it drops to 400 watts. So you can see that tray 9, tray 8, and tray 7 now have all achieved 100% um, methanol composition. And 10 and 11 and 12 are working their way there. So um, in conclusion, the tray's temperature drop from the reflux methanol flooding back, or not flooding, but feeding back into the column. So when we lower the wattages, um, methanol flows back in more and more, lowering the temperatures. Um, this is the fourth component. Um, this is the heat of the column. Um, start from like 800 watts, 700, 600, and 400. Um, so first part of this is calculating the heat removed by the condenser to see when the vapor stops rising to the condenser. And that's when we would stop collecting distillate. So using the heat capacity flow rate of the um, cold water and then the change in temperature between the cold water supply and return, we can calculate this heat removed by the condenser. You can see at about 360 is when they start uh, the cold water return and cold water supply both start to equal out. Um, so calculated at 800 watts, um, the heat removed by the condenser is roughly 200 watts. And then at 700 watts, um, the heat removed by the condenser is less than or equal to 100 watts. Um, the uncertainty was so large that we can't really say it was you know, it's ne ne negligible. Um, so this is a schematic of the whole column. Um, so we know that the reboiler, since um, it, when you plug 700 watts in, Red boiler is always going to lose 500 plus or minus 100 watts. Um, and then um, the heat removed by the condenser at 700 watts was neg neg negligible, so it's zero watts. Um, and then we know the heat lost from the entire column has to be 200 plus or minus 100 watts. Um, and then using um, percentages um, from Dr. Henry, um, about rough estimates of which parts of the column lose the most heat. Um, these are all insulated. And these are insulated as well, but the feed and reflux are not. So that's why they lose 40%-ish each. So you can see that each tray loses about 3 watts per tray. Um, and the reflux and feed both lose about 800 watts. So in conclusion, um, the total reflux, we can determine theoretical stages. Um, and tray efficiency, which we found to be 48, 51%. Um, the tray temperatures change by uh, liquid vapor equilibrium um, and composition. And then from that last schematic, we determined that 800 watts is enough to um, vaporize the light component up into the condenser and collect distillate. So you need at least 800 watts to fully run the uh, column. And that is all.